Hello everyone. So I hope you have already watched uh, a general intro about the genetic engineering and then uh, you have also watched a follow up on, uh, uh, on the polymerase chain reaction. Those two uh, intros were basically uh, like a preamble uh, for the scientific question uh, we are going to tackle in this uh, lab which is about molecular cloning of COVID-19 spike gene. Remember uh, none of the scientific experiment is without uh, uh, well thought of question. So you have to uh, refine and define a question uh, and this question based uh, discovery or question based science that is what the real science is. Uh, otherwise if you are you know thinking of reading about genetic engineering or different techniques uh, remember I don't want you to be uh, you know I want you to be sound technically but you should know which tool to be used uh, to answer which of the question you have in your mind. For example uh, in the pre present day crisis so we are uh, having a question to develop a diagnostic kit and you know we would like to develop uh, ELISA kit. ELISA kit is where you know you have uh, you take um, blood sample from a patient and you have uh, you know those pathogenic proteins in your hand and you mix patient blood with your uh, proteins and there will be antigen antibody reaction in the in this kit and then that will tell you whether patient has specific antibodies against a specific uh, pathogen or no. Uh, in case of uh, you know in this present day uh, context let's think of uh, having a diagnostic kit for for example coronavirus. Uh, you can think of um, similar uh, and diagnostic kits for some bacterial pathogen as well. But let's think about uh, coronavirus. So if we are thinking about this, we need to know the uh, viral genome. So this, this is a huge virus, one of the biggest viruses. Uh, so if we are thinking of cloning the spike gene, spike gene is this uh, receptor binding protein uh, existing in the coronavirus. So in order to go there and think of uh, cloning this because eventually you want to express spike uh, in enough amounts that you can you know uh, detect antibodies in patients uh, which is done through ELISA kits. So in order to clone spikes uh, we will uh, make use of all what we have just learned about uh, our videos in genetic engineering or PCR etc. But before going there we have to go very systematically. We have to see the genome of the virus. So for example, if I draw horizontally, uh, if this is RNA of coronavirus, so this is a plus strand RNA virus and you know RNA is a single strand molecule. So this total 30,000 uh, nuclear nucleotides are there in this virus. It has different uh, regions for example nearly uh, 20,000 nearly 20,000 nucleotides are making you know two different open reading frames and these 20,000 are basically, they are referred to as non-structural non -structural part of the virus, non-structural proteins. And then rest of the 10,000 are the structural part from here all the way to there. And there you have, let's say, the spike gene here. Then it is followed by, I believe, the envelope, then the membrane, and then the other structural genes. And in the non-structural, you have, you know, you have this, this is called open reading uh, frame one, uh, long polyprotein, uh, and then you have the open reading frame two, and here you have, you know, 
um, RNA dependent RNA polymerase and you have here helicase. This is the genome. I, I chose this intentionally because it's a small genome. Okay, uh, I could have gone to you know human genome and then try to uh, teach you cloning a tumor suppressor gene if you are working in a cancer therapeutic lab or a, 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 for example some of the epigenetic factors which, which my area is but I wanted to give you a picture of the whole genome of an organism and then you know going and picking your gene of interest and using PCR to amplify that. Now let's assume we have chosen the spike because we are interested in expressing uh, you know tons of spike protein to be used eventually for our diagnostic kit. Now, since it's a RNA virus, uh, it exists in the form of RNA in, uh, in, in, in living cells. So we have to make RNA or use RNA and convert it first into DNA before we think of going and cloning. But before elaborating on that, what we need let's say we have now identified we have the complete genome sequence of virus all the 30,000 nuclei and uh, nucleotides and then we have the detailed sequence of spike as well and remember we said we want to clone and express which means we want to uh, produce protein of a uh, helicase so we have to pay attention to certain uh, design factors of this experiment Design factors will be, for example, we have to choose, let's stick to uh, expression in bacteria, which we learned already in the, because, you know, this is a 101 uh, or 100 level course. So choose the host in which we are going to produce and let's say we are going to express it in bacteria. We have to uh, choose uh, vectors which vectors which we, we will use. Uh, we will use, let's say, we'll use a general purpose cloning vector. Cloning vector. And then we'll use bacterial expression vector. Okay. This is the expression part. This, which, which deals with the second uh, part of our experiment. But the first part is the cloning. And for cloning of spike in general purpose cloning vector, we need to design the cloning strategy. And our cloning strategy has to be really very intelligent. Because I told you this virus is an RNA virus. So in the design part of our experiment, we have to have cloning strategy. We know this is an RNA virus, which means we'll take you know total RNA from humans uh, which are infected with. Uh, coronavirus and then we we will synthesize cDNA and from there our cloning subsequent cloning strategy will work so the first step in case of cloning which needs our concentration concentration is actually get sequence of spike gene number two we need to uh, get cDNA of we have to synthesize virus cDNA we have to uh, design primers for which we rely on the sequence of spike gene. We need to ensure that 
the primers we design and the PCR amplification of the spike, it does not disturb open reading frame. Why? Because, you know, if during your cloning under the bacterial promoter, if your open reading frame is disturbed, you know, you, you lost that AUG sequence. It's no more in, you know, this triplet codon. If you, there is a frame shift, if during PCI amplification, your, your polymerase has added uh, uh, insertion or missed amplifying a nucleotide, you know, there will be frame shift mutations, you will have a premature stop code on etc. Or even if the polymerase did nothing, if polymerase perfectly amplified the whole spike gene, but while adding the restriction sites, you added restriction sites in such a way that that disturbed the start code on AUG and the stop code on, you will not be able to produce uh, spike protein eventually. Cloning will be successful, but that will be a big problem when you will go and produce protein. So let's now uh, write down a hypothetical sequence of uh, spike gene uh, and also try to amplify this gene. So I write down here uh, a hypothetical sequence of, let's say, spike gene. So this is the RNA. Uh, oh, I should have, have here. Wherever you have T's, consider them as U's. Oh. Okay. So this is an RNA sequence. Let's say this is a start codon of and you can see the triplet code, each codon in the spike, and then it ends with a UAG sequence, which is basically a stock codon. And if you could remember, this is your start codon for protein synthesis. Now, this sequence exists in here in the virus, and what we do, we design primers for this particular gene. And we just learned about the PCR primer. You can just, you know, make it double-stranded RNA, uh, double-stranded DNA yourself. Just, you know, add complementary sequences here. Uh, this is the five prime. This is the three prime. On the five prime, when you will have uh, cDNA, you, you have, for example, So this is, for example, this is now the second strand of DNA. So you are going to design PCR primers, and we just finished designing PCR primers. So for example, and I'm not going to pay more time here, so you will simply design five to three. So the best is take five to three, this sequence. So primer forward spike, Primer forward, for example, is A, 
UG, C, A, uh, at the end is because A, T, G, C, A, uh, T. This is complementary of this, okay? And your second primer will be this, reverse primer, C, T, A, C, A, T. So, C, T, A, C, A, T. This is your reverse primer, spike primer reverse. But before thinking of amplifying this, I told you we have to have the cDNA of wires. And when you design these primers, while designing the cloning strategy, you have to ensure that when we clone these, uh, this spike gene in a uh, bacterial expression vector, the open reading frame remains intact in this sets of three, the triplet codons, okay? Because let's say when you clone this in a bacterial expression vector and you have, you know, by mistake, due to addition of restriction enzymes, you know, and once restriction enzyme digest and then ligation takes place, if this reading frame is disturbed, then cloning will be successful, but expression will be not possible. You won't be able to produce protein. So that is very important. So what we have to see when we design this uh, PCR primers and cloning strategy in our mind, we have to look at, of course, I told you, uh, decide for the vectors. Uh, what we do normally, I prefer, is to clone uh, my gene of interest first in a general purpose cloning vector, which is not a bacterial expression vector directly. So I clone it in a general purpose cloning vector, and from there I uh, lift. Uh, the reason of cloning in general purpose cloning vector is I can easily sequence my gene of interest uh, and you know these are high copy plasmids as well. So I can sequence everything and I ensure that polymerase also has not uh, added any error in the uh, gene sequence in the PCR. So or, or even in the cDNA synthesis the reverse transcriptase has not created any error. We'll, we'll talk about those uh, activities. Usually for expression, whenever we clone something for expression, we use special kind of polymerase in PCR, which has proofreading activity. They, they ensure that they are not creating an error. TAC polymerase, the thermosequetus we talked about in PCR uh, module, uh, it has uh, high uh, uh, probability of adding an error. So it does, it, it lacks the proofreading activity. But the polymerases we use in, in uh, cloning for expression, they have the proofreading activity. So cloning in general purpose cloning vector gives us uh, opportunity to sequence everything very easily uh, and then ensure that our sequence amplified by reverse transcriptase as well as uh, eventually the PCR uh, from cDNA has no errors in it. So when we design the cloning strategy to clone this one in expression vector, remember in the bacterial expression vector, 